Hey everybody, John Escuga here and welcome to another video tutorial. Today's tutorial will be on how to use Aussie Pig's cutscene plugin in Roblox. This has been a request from CNET, a user on Roblox. He has made pretty good adventure games so you should check them out sometime. If you have seen the Roblox VCR community in a nutshell video, the camera moves very smoothly here. Now this is different from the Clone Troopers 1019's cutscene plugin. Clone Troopers is precise in the way it moves from point A to B, but adding too much cutscenes will cause and add lag. Also, it tends to be more stiff when it is done. I don't know why this occurs, but I hope he fixes this soon. That's why I couldn't make the video with Clone Troopers plugin. Recently, I have received more experience on how to use Aussie Pig's cutscene plugin, and it's proven to be equally or maybe even more useful than Clone Troopers cutscene plugin. I will show you what I mean in a minute. First, you will need to get the plugin. You will need to go to aussiepig.com slash roblox or click the link that I have put in the description to be able to get it. If you do go to Aussie Pig's website, scroll down and you'll see the other types of plugins that Aussie Pig has created. You can try them all out, but right now, you just need this one. Flamingo Cutscene Creator. Click on the green box next to where it says download most recent and begin downloading it. Once you have downloaded it, it should be appear as a zip file saved on the desktop. Extract the zip file and then open the extracted file. There should be a file inside of it. Now leave that alone for a second and go to where your Roblox CD is and open it. Once it opens up, select tools and open plugins folders. Now go back to the extracted file from before and either move or copy that file into the plugins folder. Restart Roblox Studio and open up any of your places. Six new icons should appear. Starting off with the first icon, this one creates a cutscene shot, a point where one registers a scene to take place. They are named as numbers and must remain like that for it to work. You can take multiple shots so it can transition onto the next. This is what I mean. I've created different shots in different places and then I select this icon, let's call it the playback icon. It doesn't work does it? It's because I need to click the workspace and then press it for it to work. Now you'll see it move from scene to scene. You can change the speed you want from one shot to another by opening the shot. Go into S between time and change the value to how long you want it to be. Let's say I want it to be a little bit more slower. I increase the number so I can increase the length and it will now appear more slower when I move it. Or when I play the playback cutscene icon. And if you want it to be faster, I will just decrease it. If you see something wrong with a particular shot, you can just create a new shot. Delete the previous shot that you didn't like and change the number value to the deleted shot. You can also use this icon before you take a new shot to rotate the camera to however you want it. Now I previously showed this in another video, it's called the recall shot icon. This lets you go back to the shot you, re you previously created. So basically, if you want to do a stop motion animation or transition and you mess up a part by moving the camera just a little bit because you know how it might appear sometimes, you can just recall the shot and keep on with your stop motion animation and it will keep looking as smoothly depending on how you do it. This one I find very helpful. The last two icons are script icons which I would recommend not to mess with unless you really know what you're doing. And so that's basically it. If you liked this video, remember to give it a like, comment, or subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on my Twitter which the link will be in the description below. So thank you guys for watching, take care, and see you all later.